Hey guys, RPM here. Hope y'all doing well and having a really great day. This is the state of Ethereum mining for, I guess, January of 2022. And, you know, I normally make these videos every hmm, every month. Last one I did was in October. So I lied. I didn't make one in November or December because I thought, you know, nothing really changed. And I think now, honestly, in terms of timeline, everything is still the same since then, as we know. So I'm going to go through a lot in this video a lot of different i guess information again that's been said again there are there are some new things which i want to go through but i just want to reiterate in case some people are still wondering maybe haven't watched previous videos and i'm just going to go through a lot the merge for those that don't know eventually the current ethereum mainnet will merge with the beacon chain proof of stake system this will mark the end of proof of work for ethereum and the full transition to proof of stake. This is planned to precede the rollout of shard chains. We formally refer to this as the docking, which is, <laughs> that's, a, that's a funny name. Anyways, Q2 of 2022, that still stands. Okay, they say here, when's it shipping? This upgrade represents the official switch to proof of stake consensus. This eliminates the need for energy intensive mining and instead secures the network using staked Ether, a truly exciting step realizing the Ethereum vision, more scalability, security, and sustainability. All right, so I'll have this, every link that I talk here, I'll have it linked down below. This is on ethereum.org, all right, right on their website. So you guys can go read this. There's a lot more information here. So next one I wanted to mention here is now the state of the merge. Now this was a blog post on consensus.net and this was posted on December 15th of 2021. So just to reiterate, just to read some things here, okay, 2022 is the year Ethereum is set to complete its largest protocol change in history, proof of work, the environmentally unfriendly consensus mechanism Ethereum uses today, also known as mining, will be replaced by a much more eco-friendly proof of stake. Uh, you guys know, you, you all know how I feel about this. Consensus recently hosted a brown bag information session with three team members working closely on the merge. Watch the session below as they break down the work their progress in 2021 and some goals in 2022. There have been a lot of Ethereum core dev meetings on their Ethereum Foundation YouTube channel, which uh, highly recommend you guys go go watch their videos. You know, they have weekly meetings every week or every two weeks or so. And, you know, I've kind of skimmed. It, it's really hard to watch these because I'm not a coder and I don't really understand how, you know, in terms of development, how it goes. It sounds like, you know, listening to, you know, what they're speaking and it sounds like obviously it's not ready, right? The merge is not yet ready as there's a lot of things to it. And they do have a merge mainnet readiness checklist here on GitHub. Again, I'll have this link down below. You guys can read this. So basically this document outlines the various tasks to work through to make the merge ready for mainnet release. And the set of items is not final and will be aligned with ongoing R&D and implementation implementation work. Okay, so scrolling down here, there's a lot of already checkmarked stuff here that's completed, I guess. But then there there is some things here that are that are not complete. So whether or not that'll be done by the end of June, I guess for the end of Q2 of 2022, begs the question. We're not quite sure, right? And going down here, you know, they got they got to do some stress testing, which hasn't been done yet. Um, looks like uh, further threat analysis not done yet. Minor attacks, resource exhaustion post merge. Okay, so still research and development that needs to be done. And yeah, so we'll see, I guess, right? There hasn't been any updates of any delays or anything yet. All right, so, but if that does come, I will let you guys know. So, as Q2 of 2022 here, the difficulty bomb, EIP 4345, hopefully you guys remember me talk about this in other videos in the past year. Basically, the difficulty bomb delay is going to start going off in June 2022. So, what happens is basically the average block times will start rising. Now, this has happened in previous times, right, in the past couple of years, in the Byzantium hard fork, the Constantinople, Murier Glacier, and yeah, you know, these times here, you can see block times are going up. Also, as that happens, the block count and block rewards chart also starts going down, right? The word, as the times start going up, then the network starts slowing down. And so what these EIPs are supposed to do, delaying the difficulty bombs, and there was, you know, previously, 
uh, back in December, like last month, December 2021, three, EIP 3554, these are here to force the developers to, I guess, you know, essentially develop and get out, you know, what they need to do. And essentially for us or for everyone in Ethereum, it's going to be the merge, right? So for this EIP, the motivation is targeting for the merge to occur before June 2022. If it's not ready by then, the bomb can be delayed further. All right, so there you go. As things will be delayed, then things will go back to normal. As you can see, when the difficulty bombs are delayed, you can see the block times go back to normal around 13 seconds or so. Just to mention the merge, some people think the merge is going to lower the transaction fees and whatnot, and no, it's not going to do that. Basically, sharding or shard chains here is supposed to do that. Okay, so that is an upgrade that is slated for 2023. Shard chains will expand Ethereum's capacity to process transactions and store data. The shards themselves will gain more features over time rolled out in multiple phases. Okay, so the merge is just the merge with the beacon chain and then basically staking will be done throughout the whole network and there will be no more mining with consensus their blog post here which i highly recommend you guys read i'm going to skip this part here but they say here the proof of work consensus mechanism is not sustainable and not scalable long term and then they say here which i totally disagree with proof of stake makes participating in the network more attainable for many more users and not just large miners i i just have to laugh i i have to laugh at that one Next one, more equal distribution of the network rewards to incentivize good behaviors and open up yield to many more users, despite a decreased issuance rate of ETH and smaller block rewards. Now, going back to just the proof of stake, making, you know, participating on the network more attainable. Now, this is going to make it a lot more centralized in a way because the total supply and market cap of Ethereum in terms of the Ether I just wanted to show you guys this. This is on etherscan.io, which I'll have linked down below. You guys can see this for yourself. So according to this, right now, the current total supply of Ethereum is 118 million Ethereum, roughly. Now, there was a pre-mine on Ethereum, which was about 72 million Ethereum, okay? Then plus the 44 million Ethereum that has been mined so far, right from from all us miners now the pre-mine what i've heard back then was around six thousand different ethereum addresses now that could be six thousand different people i'm not quite sure but you know there's a very large majority of ethereum on those guys who invested straight in the very beginning and the majority of ethereum that's on the 2.0 right now is from the initial crowd sale the initial pre-mine so for the rest of the guys like us miners or the ind individual miners that are mining out in the world right now, how many of you have 32 Ethereum to stake? Now, there is going to be staking pools, so you don't need to have 32 Ethereum, you know, full 32 Ethereum to stake. You can have increments of Ethereum like 0 0.01 or 0 0.05. I'm not quite sure what the requirement is. I have not heard any specifics of that yet, so we'll see how that goes. But anyways, I think that <laughs> once Ethereum goes proof of stake, it's going to be quite centralized in a way and also with the fact that they're going to be going with cloud infrastructure type of stuff so that is going to be quite interesting and we'll see how that goes whether or not eth 2.0 or sharding you know is actually going to jump the price up for some reason we'll see what happens i guess that depends on a lot of people who are mining ethereum and speculating that the price of ethereum is going to go up because you know not only is ethereum also being burnt right? Almost 1.6 million Ethereum has been burned so far on the network, which is quite a lot. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. It's going to happen. Ethereum moving to POS. Us talking about it freely like this isn't going to change anything. So they're going to go ahead with it. So be it. All right, guys. Now let's talk about the Ethereum network hash rate. So as of recording right now, the Ethereum network hash rate is, uh, according to Etherscan, over one petahash. But actually, when I go to mining pool stats, they say it's around 980 or 943. So I think it's been dropping. Not quite sure if it's maybe Bit Bitmain, you know, shipping those E9s or A11, Inner Silicon A11s. Who knows? I'm not quite sure. I haven't had any updates on that. So uh, yeah, the, the hash rate has been dropping a bit. And I guess that's also maybe correlated with the market also going down. Right, you guys know the past week, uh, even uh, past couple of months, the, the market has been coming down, generally, but more so these past week that we've had quite a bit of a drop, right? And so this has definitely, I guess, scared a lot of people, scared a lot of miners per se, 
that are mining and are probably turning off. That could be the explanation. Not quite sure. The hash rate hasn't really dropped like that much. But just to give like the perspective of the Ethereum network hash rate has been climbing since DeFi summer of 2020, right? That's when things started to get really profitable. And ever since then, no one's looked back. Everyone, we're all been mining and it's been extremely profitable since then. But now profitability has come down, as you all know. I'm sure you all know. So anyways, enough about that. Let's keep going. So with Bitcoin price coming down, right? Everything seems to be coming down with it. And when things go up with Bitcoin, then everything generally usually goes up with it, right? Not financial advice, but that that's what I've noticed and other people have noticed as well. So going on now with, you know, the state of Ethereum mining is, you know, GPUs. Have you guys been seeing GPU prices go down? And I've kind of seen GPU prices go down. Yes, it's still up there right rtx 3080s founders editions i'm just looking at the prices of these uh recently sold on ebay 1650 1600 for like you know the founders editions which are non-lhr as you guys wrote as you guys know like if they get full hash rate so these are still gpus i think a lot of people are trying to get just to mine ethereum i guess for the next i don't know right if ethereum merge happens in q2 2022 people are still going for these types of gpus which yeah they're, they're still great, right? And they're still great on a very versatile on other algorithms. So that goes into the conversation of, you know, when the merge happens and I guess talking about profitability, if the market's going to go down anyway, then talking about profitability of other coins, I don't think any of these other coins, I'm, I'm not saying it could or could not like Ravencoin could just moon. Who knows? We're not quite sure and carry the crypto mining community in terms of profitability. Who knows, right? Nobody knows. Nobody can give you an exact definition of what will happen in six months when that hash rate from Ethereum is going to spread off into all these other coins. I think I sound like a broken record. We've talked about this a million times already, but man, well, well we're going to see, right? I'm very interested to know what will happen. But for me, I still believe long term, big picture of the market will eventually come back up, whether or not that'll happen in a year you know, if we're going to have like a short term bear market, long term bear market, nobody knows. And so depending on what your strategy is, I don't want to get into that in this video. There are many strategies of if you're going to keep mining, you know, out of, out of pocket or, uh, you know, you're paying for your electrical bill out of your pocket, you know, and hopefully you don't have to sell the coin in order to pay for your electric. Right. And that's pretty hard because then you're not going to be able to see the appreciation of that crypto that you've hodled in the future. Many different strategies out there. Anyways, guys, I think that's it. I don't want to make this video too long. I think that's a little update of just the merge and what has come about of it. There is this readiness checklist that I guess kind of helps with wondering, you know, if they're going to be ready. So I will keep update of all this. I have not heard of anything yet that is coming about in terms of it being delayed or it's going to be happening. So if that does happen, uh, of course, I will give you guys an update of this. So Anyways, links down below to what I all talked about in case you guys want to learn more about the merge. I know a lot of people keep asking. And so this is information I think uh, will be imperative to all of you because it is a pretty monumental event that will cause a lot of people to just stop mining because depending on their electrical costs, it will be it can be very detrimental and it's it's gonna suck for a lot of people unfortunately anyways thank you all for watching i will see you all in the next video have a good one and peace out